Hello everybody, I'm Dennis and I'm here at the 1397 Seaplane Flying here in Moberg Seaplane Base just outside of Bemidji, Minnesota and I got here last night from St. Louis, Missouri and it was a real nice trip. I had a little tailwind all the way and uh, my first fuel stop was uh, after a four hour uh, leg was Gutenberg, Iowa. And uh, at the Abel Island, there's a nice little uh, airfield there, but right across from the airfield in, on, in the Mississippi is a little marina, and I got fuel there. From there, um, I went on to uh, Surfside, and um, all the gang helped me out. There were real hospital people at Surfside. You couldn't find a better bunch of people up there at Surfside, and bought some pump out plugs, and uh, had a cup of coffee and some pie, and then came up, uh, up here to Walker, and then. Uh, Came up here this afternoon, at another 22 mile, uh, mile leg up from Walker to here. Well, this is an original 1945 J3. Um, I restored it just a few years ago. It took me about four years to restore. It went straight from the test flight I did right to the Bauman factory and got a new set of Bauman 1500s put on it. They've been wonderful float for the airplane because I only operate with a 75 horsepower engine and I'm using a cruise prop also. So when I load it up, it can get pretty, uh, pretty long takeoff run. But overall, it's been a great ship. Um, I did add a little extended baggage. Um, I did little things like uh, I added uh, oh. a Super Cub rear seat for any of the bigger people that want to go for a ride. I put in a, uh, I put in a fishing rod tube in the back here. So you, my fishing rod's right here, and you can go a little fish if you feel like standing on a float. Works real nice, and I got a little storage. I keep my um, PFDs in there. My ELT is back there also. And also I keep the paperwork for the airplane. I always thought one of the great things uh, about the Seaplane Pilots Association was, uh, you know, they give you a lot of the basics. And, but at any rate, I always carry around, in case I stop somewhere and people aren't familiar with the airplane, I always carry, carry around the Seaplane Pilots Model Code of Conduct. And it's an excellent little, uh, thing for talking about the Ten Commandments for mixing with boats. And I also have my weight and balance in here, all my paperwork, and all other regulations that are in here. Keep it in the freezer bag in case it gets wet. Exactly. I sure do. And so at any rate, and then I store that, store that back in there also. And I keep, I always carry a good clean uh, sumper because I believe in really clean fuel. I'm constantly sumping the airplane. And, it's really a very basic J3 Cub. I didn't really make many modifications other than added a uh, wing, left wing tank, which is very important uh, <clears throat> when you're doing the float flying. It, it's, uh, as you know, the fuel can be critical. And I got a simple uh, Garmin 195 uh, GPS in there. But I kept everything pretty standard with everything with the instruments. And the, uh, I did go to the metalized uh, side walls for easier inspection and clean out. Um, but uh, it's been a great little airplane, and uh, I made the rear seat easily removable. Uh, completely made new spars for the airplane when I rebuilt it. These are all new wood spars, both fo uh, yeah. forward and aft spars. And what's interesting is um, Andrew King uh, wove my cables for me and did an excellent job. And that's our good friend from down in Walker, and Maisie flew along. That was her first time in the Cub. And uh, it's a Friday night here, and there'll be people camping out tonight. It's a beautiful night and uh, here Friday night. And I'll be heading back to Walker here in a few minutes and coming, coming back in the morning. Did Daisy come from St. Louis? Uh, no, Maisie uh, is actually from Walker. It's a friend of mine's dog. Okay. He was taking a nap, and I stole his dog. First time in a plane? I, th I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, uh, how do you handle it? She did great. She? Yeah, she did great. She just sat there? And she just said, well, she was trying to get comfortable. I'm going to let her fly in the back seat on the way back. Did she look out the window at all? Yeah, oh, she stayed looked the whole time. I'll be darned. She looked outside the whole time. That's a hell of a new, new experience for a dog. <laughs> I think she looked like she enjoyed meeting everybody here, too. Well, the weather is real bad. If it's windy, I'm not thinking about it.
Well, this is the only running water we had. It worked out pretty good. You had a place to wash your hands and dry them off before you got a bite to eat. Saturday morning was absolutely perfect. Blue skies, white puffy clouds, a light breeze coming out of the west, which made it perfect for the seaplane people to land on the water. Once you parked your airplane, the uh, chapter had a shuttle bus, if you want to call it that, to bring you where the food was in the hangar. Mm -hmm. Looking at airplanes parked on the grass and seaplanes pulled up to the beach is what it's all about. Well, almost. You got to have some food to go along at this fly-in, and there was plenty of that and a chance to meet with some people you haven't seen before and talk about your favorite sub subject, and that's why. Are these all ready to go? Yep. Come in yet? I ordered a uh, cannon. My airplane is a 1953 Cessna 170 B model, and it has a. It's a little bit tricked out. It has a 180 horsepower uh, Lycoming 0360 engine in it, and a Hartzell constant speed prop, and a lot of other uh, STCs, uh, fuel-wise, and floats and skis and all, all kinds of fun things. <laughs> And it won a nice award at Oshkosh in 2005, Outstanding Metal Float Plane. Uh, I've had it since I bought it in Alaska. I lived in Alaska for uh, seven years. I bought it in Alaska in 1996 and restored it after that. And you're, where are you based out of? Uh, the airplane lives in the summertime on my lake in front of my house in Hayward, Wisconsin. Then we take it off the floats and fly it to Arizona, to Wickenburg, Arizona, to our home in Wickenburg in the wintertime. How long did it take to get from Wisconsin to the Moberg Air Base today? Uh, it's 178 nautical miles and it took just exactly two hours. I had a headwind. I'll have a tailwind going home. The airplane cruises about 100 knots on floats. Is this your first time here at Moberg? I have never been to Moberg before. Very pleasant place. I'm 
enjoying it thoroughly. I'm Jim Youngren from Halleck, Minnesota, and I met Dave at the uh, Oshkosh Corn Rolls for the Seaplane Pilot Association. I bought a ticket from him. He said it was a good party, and it was, and he said to come here to Moberg today for the big fly-in, so I did. I flew 182, brought my wife, and I'm here today to enjoy it. So have you had enough hamburgers? I have. The hamburgers were perfect. I had a, I had a double. I got to gotta ask I had you. a double. A double hamburger? I did. I got to ask you an interesting question. A lot of people are going to be watching this. Yeah, that's good. And I'm the founder of the SBA. That's good. Are you a member of the Seaplane Pilots Association? Uh, you know, I am not. And I because you're on wheels. And I, I am on wheels. I'm not a member. And I told Dave that when I bought the ticket for the corn roast, he charged me an extra 10 bucks. Oh, jeez. <laughs> How about that? I have to cut the tape there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is there more? Operation. We got a chair for waiting in line.
For the seaplane people, the wind velocity and direction and light chop on the water was absolutely perfect. Great day to come in by seaplane. You could pull up to the shoreline right into a, a headwind, if you will, so you wouldn't have to weather vane when you got out of the airplane. Morning. Can I give you a hand? Uh, no, he's a serious float plane man. He's got his own boots on. <laughs> Can you go ask Grandpa what kind of airplane 
that is. That's a super cup. It's an airplane. Maybe I'll come over here and get somebody else to come. It's a super cup. It's a super cup airplane. Look at this, there's a little airplane coming. Nice. No one's going to land on the grass. Would you believe it's probably easier to come in by float plane or land plane because parking has its limitation. There's not a lot of space at Moberg's.
When you look at these pictures, you would think you're at a seaplane base, land base, someplace in northern Canada. A little hard to believe it's lo located only about three miles from Bemidji, Minnesota, and about a mile south of uh, Bemidji Airport. If you didn't make it this year, check the websites for the dates for 2012 and join us for hamburger and fellowship at the, Airborg, the Moberg Air Base at Bemidji, Minnesota. Sponsored by EAA Chapter 1397. Great, we're fine. <laughs> How many airplanes came in? I, lo I lost count at about 30. Now, I'm not sure. You'll have to talk to one of the guys that was logging tail numbers. Ah, uh, yes, that's the... Carol. Yeah, so I'm not sure. But we did real well, and we put 450 bucks in the till.
Wow. Have we run out of food or we still got plenty uh, of food? No, we still got food over there. We're doing great. Good turnout. Do it again next year. You know, I saw it on supercub.org or backcountry pilot, one or the other. I don't okay. remember which. It's on several websites. Yeah. Well, welcome to first time here at Moberg. First time, yeah. Oh, nice little place for a seaplane yeah, and for a land plane. Yeah. There's still some hamburgers out there. Go get them. Well, we ate, but I saw a guy I know here. I'm going to go say hi. I sold him an airplane. Oh, you did? Okay, we have a drawing here to do before people depart. You got a ticket when you came in the door, and we have from Grant Wallace. A, from Lake and Air, out of Whipline, out of Minneapolis, a $50 gift certificate. So your ticket is worth $50 of supplies from Lake and Air. So at this time, who's going to make the drawing and where are the tickets? Are they on the front table? Go ahead and shake up the dollars and tickets and hand me one. $50 gift certificate. If you're on the flight line, we'll do it three times. If we don't draw your name, we'll go to the next person. Uh, okay, your hand's too big to go in the jar. I can, t <laughs> I can tell. Okay. One ticket worth fifty dollars of supplies from Lake and Air. Everyone's hands get caught in the jar. Put a little soap on it. Oh, okay, man, can you read the name on that thing? Denny Schwad. Denny Schwad on the flight line. If he doesn't answer, we'll go another drawing. Denny, you coming? Yo, oh, that's, oh, yeah, where's Yellow Cub Driver? Shouldn't be playing the national anthem on this. <laughs> okay, well, he's here because his plane is here. Oh, he's coming? Okay, Denny. See Grant in front here? He's got a $50 gift certificate for you from Lake and Air. Thank you, and thank you for bringing your airplane from two hours away. Go ahead. Okay, for those of you who don't know it, we did interview him yesterday on tape. For those of you, he flew his J3 Cub all the way from St. Louis. St. Louis, Missouri, not Minnesota. It took him, what, two days to get here? One day, what was the what heck of a tailwind? No tailwind? On 75 horsepower? Oh, do we believe that? Yeah, yeah we do. We, uh, we interviewed him on tape earlier, and it'll be on the video site with the rest of our videos. Okay, thank you very much. Lots of food. Go get it. Because if you don't eat it, those of us who belong to the chapter will sit here and have to eat it half the night and go home sick.